In this episode, I want to talk about probably the most important shot in pickleball, and that is the serve. Now, I came from a tennis background, so there are a couple similarities and a couple differences when it comes to serving. A couple similarities is we serve at a cross-court angle, just like in tennis. So if I'm standing on the right side of my court, I will be serving into the opposite box on the other side of the court. Another thing in pickleball is our serve must go past the kitchen line and the kitchen zone on the other side. So if my ball does land short or hits the kitchen line, it would be considered a fault. If the ball hits the sidelines or the baseline, the ball is playable and considered in. A couple ways to stand. There is no right or wrong answer to either of these tricks that I'm going to tell you. It's just your personal preference. So try them both and pick one that works for your game and your style of play. When I come up to my line, I want to make sure I'm either in an open stance with my toes, hips, and shoulders facing the net, or I can keep my stance nice and closed off. I generally say for beginners and advanced beginners that one foot in front of the other is a little bit easier than trying the open stance model. When you are standing in your um, closed stance, to be very specific with you, I like your front foot, your lead foot, to be pointing northeast. So those toes are pointing northeast on both sides of the court, okay? There are also a couple ways you can bounce the ball. You can either do a drop serve, just like this, or you can take the ball in the air. When I tell people that like to hit the ball off the bounce, there's a couple things I like to give them um, tips on. So the first one would be, since the ball is hitting the asphalt or the concrete surface, I always want to drop the ball from the same height every single time so I create consistency with the bounce. So if you're one of those players that likes to have the ball hit the ground before you serve, I'd like you to start thinking about always doing it from the same height every single time. If you notice, every single time I'm going to drop the ball from my shoulder position, letting it bounce and hitting it over. Sometimes I see a lot of players will bounce it here once and drop it from here a different time and the difference in height kind of creates missed opportunities and missed serves. Uh, the other way to do it is to toss the ball in the air. If we're going to be one of those players that tosses the ball in the air and doesn't let the ball hit the ground, then I would like your fingertips to face towards the sky. Now in the bounce model, our fingertips were facing down towards the ground, but in the toss model, I want your fingertips to face up. In this situation, I want you to toss the ball up, let it fall, and hit it as it's coming down. One of the big rules in pickleball is we have to make contact below our waist. So this serve is actually technically an underhand serve. If you find yourself trying to hit it from side to side, or above your waist, or from a high to a low angle, it would be considered illegal. So I want to make sure that you always are trying to make contact below your waist. One other way to tell is by keeping your wrist higher than your paddle face. So again, I'm coming from underneath the ball. If you've ever played uh, cornhole, or you are a bowler in your previous life, the motion of the serve is very similar to both of those sports. So if I was going to bowl, I would step through it and swing all the way towards my target down the lanes and hit the pins. It's the very same mechanics as the pickleball serve. Okay, I'm starting from a low position, making contact with the ball right in front of my knee and finishing over my shoulder. Another good analogy with this is I want to make sure that I'm following through on my serve. A lot of the times I see players will stop right as they make contact and the balls will start to fly all over the court and they don't understand why their balls are going in all different directions. The analogy that I use here is if you were a golfer and you were on the tee box, you would never see a golfer swing and stop his swing all the way through. There's a lot of tension there. It's almost like slamming on your brakes at a red light. So instead of doing that, I want you to come all the way through your shot. It's very important for the follow through in pickleball. Okay, just to reiterate, the bounce serve from our shoulder height or the toss serve, fingertips up. Both are viable options and both are making contact below my waist. If you happen to be watching this series and you're relatively new to the sport of pickleball, rather than starting with your serve at the baseline, I like to start serving from the non-volley zone line to really get the rhythm down and the motion down of the serve. That way there's less distance to work with at the very beginning. So if you're brand new, again, I would start front, right behind the non-volley zone line and work on your serve technique from this distance. Okay, before I had said, I'm going to start dropping the ball in front of my foot, and I want to work on the service motion. Starting from this close to the net, also going to really work on you getting underneath this ball. What I see a lot of times happen is people are sideswiping the ball 
and it's not getting all the way to the net and it's hitting the tape. So if you start from this distance here, it's going to force you to hit up on the ball and this is going to make your serve nice and consistent over time. Again, it's not about how hard you can hit the ball, it's about how many times in a row can you make it in the box. So if you're just starting out, I encourage you to start from here. And you can choose the bounce serve like we talked about earlier, or you can do it from out of your hand, out of the palm of your hand. Again, trying to hit up on the ball, but making contact below our waist. When you're comfortable with that distance, I want you to move back just a little bit to the midcourt and do the same thing. So now I'm gonna stay halfway between my kitchen line and my non-volley zone line. The distance is getting greater, so I'm gonna need to accelerate a little bit more, but the mechanics of the serve stay the same. Again, my toe is pointing northeast. I'm hitting up on the ball and I'm following through. Another big tip is to follow through that ball like we talked about earlier. Perfect, one more. Great. Now that you're comfortable with this distance, we're gonna do it from the full court. In pickleball, our distance to our baselines is 44 feet, so we've got quite a lot of bit of space to work with. I'm gonna step back, I'm gonna do a little bit more. When I'm this far back, there's two things that I really wanna think about doing. One is I wanna accelerate through the ball. All right, there's this Part of my serve right through this motion here, where I'm gonna to need to speed up my swing. I wanna hit the gas right through here, okay? Acceleration is going to actually give you more control at putting the ball where you want it to go. The second tip is I want you to clear the net, okay? Net clearance is also very important. So when I'm working with my clients, I always tell them to try to aim about two feet over the net. That's gonna give you enough margin of error to not hit the tape, and also enough distance over the net to get that ball nice and deep. Again, I'm following all the way through, even from back here. My paddle's starting behind my body. I don't generally like to have a giant backswing because no one's gonna see this. At the end of the day, everyone sees what's in front of you. So a little bit shorter of a backswing and a nice big follow through is going to help. Again, I'm accelerating through this contact point here, but I'm also not tightening my grip. That's the other caveat to this, is I want you to accelerate without tightening your grip. Good, we're gonna do two more serves from this distance back here. Last one. Very good. That's the mechanics of the serve. If you find yourself without a hitting partner, but a giant basket of balls, this serving drill is going to really help you and take your serve to the next level. Okay, so I'm gonna start from behind the baseline here. My goal, is to get that ball as deep as possible. So there's a line of cones back there, red, yellow, and orange. My goal is to hit in between those two lines of cones, okay? There's also a ball on top of each cone, and my goal is to try to hit those balls off of the cones as well. If I can hit all six off, then I've completed the drill successfully. And again, our whole goal is to try to make as many balls in a row as we can. I don't wanna do this drill and try to start spraying balls and losing points. So if you notice, my cones are roughly 12 to 18 inches inside of all of the exterior lines. I always tell people it's a really, really good idea to not aim for the line, but maybe aim 12 or 18 inches inside of the line. So with me in a basket of balls, my goal is one, to get the serve in, two, to get it deep, and if you've mastered those two things, the third one would be to get it to their backhand side. In this particular drill, their backhand side is down the center of the court, or where you can see two of those yellow cones. Here we go. And you can do this as long as you'd like, but your whole goal is to get that ball deep in between those two lines. Your next goal is to try to hit that ball off the cone. I'm close. Here we go. Again, in deep and to their backhand side. Practice makes perfect. If you notice, my hips are rotating, and I'm really getting around that ball while I'm making contact below my waist. Let's do a couple more here. I'm all over that cone. I'm gonna hit it. Acceleration and net clearance is also key. These targets are very hard to hit, but when I'm playing a real match, I'm also envisioning these spots actually being there. So not only when you're drilling with cones, 
I have to imagine those cones being there when I step up to the service line in a real point. There goes a cone off the, a ball off the cone. Do a couple more serves here. Normally I set my timer for five minutes. And during those five minutes of this drill, I try not to miss more than one. One serve is all I'm allowing myself to miss. I'm gonna hit one more cone, here we go. Last serve right here. Again, set a timer for five minutes, work on serving nice and deep, work on hitting targets, and then do it again on the other side of the court.